Hello, I'm Olivier Mouvito, and welcome to Introduction to Hydraulics and the Pneumatic Systems. I'm going to be your instructor in this period. So first, let me start by showing you what we're going to have in these sessions. You will learn about hydraulics, electrohydraulics, pneumatics, and the electro-pneumatics. So in our short videos, we'll be looking at fundamentals for hydraulics and pneumatics, of course, and basic component for hydraulics and the pneumatics, and how to read and how to make the circuits within hydraulics or pneumatics. And we will be building circuits and trying to link them to the real world application. Then, as we go through this, I think uh, you will learn how to use tools and the equipment that we have here at IPRS Kigali, and it will be very helpful. Then, you as a student, you need to have like a piece of paper and a pen. Because during the video, you are supposed to be taking notes so that you can summarize at the end of the video. So before we go further, when you say hydraulics and the pneumatic system, we just mean fluid power. And we know that when we say fluid power, we have to, get to, to start by understanding what is a fluid. So what is a fluid? A fluid is any substance being able to flow, a substance that has got no shape. And when you say fluid power, we are just going to use the fluid as power transmission medium. We mean we generate power and we transmit it through the fluid power. And when we say fluid, fluid power system, we just mean hydraulic system and a pneumatic system. Now let's start with pneumatic system. What is a pneumatic system? First of all, pneumatics came from Greek word, which is pneuma, which means wind. So Using pneumatics would just mean the use of compressed air to transmit power, or the use of pressurized gas to perform mechanical motion. And we have some applications, like manipulating tools. Let's say robots, linkage, sequencing, clamping. We can say also in industrial plant, like polluting plants, packaging machine, stamping, labeling, printing, we can also say on the checking station in like an industry, we can say measuring, counting, weighting, testing, or sorting. Even on cars, we have those, those doors which are operated by pneumatic systems. So like a warehouse door, like bus door, or gates. Then why do we have to prefer pneumatics? I mean the advantage of pneumatics. First of all, air is available. Having that air, that's an addition. So air is unlimited supply. Two, the air can be transported over long distance. And three, we, are, we can be able to store the air so that we can keep working even if the electrical power gets lost. Then when you try to compare pneumatics and hydraulic system, pneumatics works very fast than hydraulics. Pneumatics is clean. It is not like hydraulic oil. Pneumatics is very clean, which means we can use pneumatics like in textile industries or food industries. Then pneumatics is non-explosive non and is non-toxic, and it has got an overload protection. But it also has some disadvantages. Everybody knows that pneumatics or air, simply air, absorb moistures, and we know water in contact with metal, there is a rust. So we are supposed to remove those moistures from pneumatic system. That's where we need air dryer. Two, the exhaust air causes noises. So we need silencers to try to minimize the noise. Three, it's a pressure. When you compare pressure from pneumatic system to hydraulic system, pneumatic is really low. So when you need to work with high pressure, you can't use pneumatics unless you use hydraulics. And last, to have smooth and even motion is not possible in a pneumatic system just because we are using pressurized gases. And you know the gases is compressed. The gases are compressible. So we cannot have 
smooth or even, more, even movement in pneumatic system. So if you have the application that needs a smooth motion, you are not going to use pneumatics unless you use hydraulics. Now let's see compressed air as energy source. First of all, what is air? Air is a mixture of gases. But we already know that air is colorless, which means it is invisible, it is odorless, it is tasteless. But air is a matter. We can feel its presence. And composition of air by volume, we have 78% of nitrogen. We have 21% of oxygen. And we have 1% of other gases like carbon dioxide and argon. So here we have, let's see the basic component for pneumatic system. I will show them to you. We have compressor. The wall unit is pressure source, but we have a compressor. A compressor is only this one, the one that compresses the air that we need. Then we have tank, air receiver. The air receiver is the one that stores the compressed air. And we have a primer mover here. It might be an electric motor or an engine, as long as it provides mechanical motion to, to the compressor. Then here we have other parts, like a pressure switch, which will be switching on or off depending on the pressure level that we have. And we have relief valve here to protect again depending on the pressure that we have. And we have the regulator. But coming back to the list, we have the dryer. A dryer is the one which is going to remove moisture from compressed air. And it can do this in three ways, either by using adsorption or absorption, or cooling down. Apart, apart from dryers, we have a filter. A filter is going to be removing the contaminant from compressed air before it reaches the, the actuators or the valves. We also have the valve, pressure control valve to be regulating the pressure that we want in our system. And we will have, we have a lubricator. A lubricator is the one which, be, which is supposed to be adding some droplets of oil into the compressed air stream so that it can replicate the internal moving part for the system so as to, pre, to minimize as much as possible the friction. And when filter, regulator and lubricator are connected together, they give this so-called FRL unit, which means F stands for filter, R stands for regulator, and L stands for lubricator. So having three functions, removing contaminants, regulating the pressure we want, and adding oil in the system. Apart from the conditioning, we can go to control valves. So in control valves, we can have directional control valve. This is a directional control valve. This is another directional control valve. Among the valve, we can also talk about flow control valves. This is a flow control valve to control the speed. Apart from this, we can go to actuators. Actuators, which are the one that converts fluid energy into mechanical work, the one that operates, the one that lifts, the one that opens the door. These are the actuator. So it's going to be a double acting actuator or a single acting actuator. It can be, it can be even elect, uh, a motor like air motor or an oscillator. Before we go to the circuits, we'll have to make sure that we have understood this. That's why we stop from here today. And the next session will be about the circuit installation. We'll deal with circuits.